we turn now from talking cats to talking trees, ants, I mean, and the other denizens of the imagination of J.R.R. Tolkien, the patron saint of alienated preteen boys who spend their spare time formulating fake languages. On the spate of games released to coincide with Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings film, probably the best was Battle for Middle Earth, a real-time strategy game that managed to feel just as huge and historic as the books themselves. The question now is whether the sequel can survive the port to a console. Here's our review of Lord of the Rings Battle for Middle Earth 2 for the Xbox 360. Okay, here we go. Another real-time strategy game set in World War II. Let's just get this over with. Hey, wait a second. This isn't Normandy. This is Middle Earth. Oh, thank God. It looks like our summer video game drought has finally come to an end. At least for this week. Victory is ours. The Lord of the Rings The Battle for Middle-Earth 2 takes everything you love about the classic Tolkien stories and allows you to control them on the Xbox 360. Put an end to this infestation! This time the plot follows the lesser-known exploits of characters only briefly glimpsed in the films. The remaining leaders prepare for the Dark Lord's assault upon the Northern Lines. That's right, you'll actually be playing as one of these guys. Elrond forms a plan to unite his most powerful warrior, Glorfindel, with the dwarf leader, Glowin, to make war on the goblins. But that's enough complaining. We're happy to report that unlike most strategy games played on a home console, using the controller to command your troops works almost perfectly. You arrived just in time. Our friends at Electronic Arts have licensed both the films and the literary trilogy, so you get the gorgeous production value of Peter Jackson's version, plus the expanded universe of the books. It's a worm! For example, Tolkien fanatics will be happy to know that cult favorite Tom Bombadil has returned after getting cut from the first film. He's basically a super-powered military unit who shows up, sings a song, and causes everyone to drop dead. He's kind of like the Great White of Middle-Earth. What, too soon? The views expressed by Morgan and Adam are not representative of G4 and do not reflect the views or policy of this network. Sorry for the Great White joke. Stay tuned for Fast Lane. Anyway, would you believe that he took time out of his busy schedule to come and talk with us today? Yes, joining us live from Middle-Earth, it's Tom Bombadil. So, tell us, Tom, what have you been up to? Well, after I found out I wasn't going to be in the movie versions, I headed down a terrible path. Pipeweed, night elves... I was out of control, but I'm doing much better now. I've got a great sponsor, and I, I started doing Pilates. I'm even going out on auditions again. In fact, I wrote a six-page poem about it. Can I sing it to you? Uh, no. Well, are you sure? No. Here, I'll, I'll just sing the beginning of it for you. Once upon a day on the fields of May, there was snow in the summer where the blossom lay. Yeah, um, looks like we, uh, accidentally, uh, lost the connection there. Hey, not to change subjects abruptly, but did we mention that Battle for Middle-Earth 2 allows you to take charge of the forces of evil? Goblins attack! Our only real complaint is that the camera won't pan out far enough to take in all the scenery. You'll spend a lot of time fiddling with the view just so you can see all of your elven friends. But that's a hobbit-sized gripe compared to how good the overall product is. Excellent! Our first catch of the day! The Lord of the Rings, The Battle for Middle-Earth 2 catches a four... ...out of five. How dare you insult Glorfindel for not being Legolas? I wasn't insulting. I was just noting that the sequel had to dig kind of deep into the Middle Earth mythos to drag out some characters. That's Glorfindel. He killed a Balrog. Have you ever killed a Balrog? Hmm? Yeah, with the Breaking Stuff team. Those were some badass Mongolian kids. Here's our review of Lord of the Rings, The Battle for Middle Earth 2, The Rise of the Witch King. Picture the dwindling forces of evil being pushed back at their own gate. Grunting, swearing, blood. Fancy fade to the Witch King. He's Tony Soprano crossed with Harry Potter and dripping with the eyeshadow of Johnny Depp. He takes out the dwarf, takes out the other beard guy, takes out Spider-Man. Only weakness can be hurt by women. A strange past, uh, work that into a prequel somehow. Anyway, Susie daggers for hands, comes up and stabs him one. He dies. Not true, girl's a hermaphrodite. Big in Europe right now. Witch King returns home defeated, but even more determined. Learns Tibetan martial arts, bottles his own wines, adopts a Cambodian child. And that's how the Witch King returns. 
Oh, and at no point did he ever throw a Blackberry at his assistant. Publicists are the new mouth of Sauron, and this is the new expansion for Lord of the Rings Battle for Middle-earth 2, Return of the Witch King. Despite the title, our quest hurls our crusade of evil a thousand years before Smeagol sheathed his finger with tainted gold. A primitive witch king wages war against the splintered lands of Arnor. Story elements from the nine missions come from the Lord of the Rings canon, which is just another word for ye old fan fiction. Not to be confused, however, with the modern fan slash fiction, where we often find Legolas traversing Gimli's crack of doom. Charity, it's the press release that writes itself. Witch King is all about the kids of today. It's always saying that children are our greatest natural resource. Of me. Our greatest natural resource of me. Return of the Witch King presents the same level of pristine butchery between delicate layers of story that keeps the humors moving. Missions require multiple goals to conquer the lands of man. Your path to the frozen throne may be a short one, but you'll claw your way through every dirty hamlet just to get there. A new master beckons for new minions. Your rebellious mob can hand out the pain from a distance or show them the business end of an angry orc. Thrall masters call upon any group from wolf riders to... I bring filthy spearmen from Great, now we're fighting the side of light with tetanus. Lockjaw will slow down this army, but it could deter some slash fan fiction. I mean, it was bound to happen. You put your face out there long enough, and sooner or later, one of those paparazzi scumbags is going to get a picture of your Eye of Sauron. Beyond the realm of the Witch King and about a thousand years, little else has changed. The War of the Ring mode received a few tweaks, as well as orcs as heroes. Otherwise, you're just slogging through the same dirt as before. But stomps aside, Witch King brings little to an already epic game. That's why we're giving it a three. Out of five. Witch King, he's back. You know, like I was saying to Witch King the other day, hatred is Hollywood's new DUI. Everybody's got a hatred. Uh, I hate the Irish. 